So what do you need to make the Steam Deck your only PC? Well, an external monitor, because that's just not big enough to use as your primary. You'll also need a dock. I found that out fairly quickly because I tried to get by with one of these. This is the one I used to use for my iPad, but it just doesn't work because you have to lay it down and then this will run over the side. Not a good time. You'll also want external keyboard and mouse because you're not using that to navigate and type Word documents. And finally, you're gonna want your backup computer for when something doesn't work on Linux. I'm only half kidding. Now, getting into the actual experience, the desktop is pretty standard. It literally looks like a Windows desktop. You got your bar down the bottom, Windows, even the Windows key on the keyboard brings that up. Uh, even down to the updates. There's always updates, just like on Windows. They've done a good job getting everything pretty close to parity. They've tried. There's a lot of apps. There's Spotify, Netflix, even Blender if you want to try that out. There's a lot of Linux versions of programs. Surprisingly, I might say. I was surprised. If what you're looking for isn't here, there is usually a free option. For example, there is no Microsoft Office, but there is LibreOffice, which has everything you need. You've got your Microsoft Word. I forget what it's called, but there are versions of PowerPoint and Excel for Linux is the gist of it. Now, if it's not on the store, you're gonna have to go hunting online and that's where it starts to get difficult, but I'll cover that later. The Steam Deck can handle this kind of workload very easily. The APU is plenty fast. So if I open up, let's say Google, and then if I pull up, do I have any documents here? Yeah, let's say that I'm, I'm reading this. If you pull up this kind of thing, maybe have like Spotify and Discord running in the background, that will be absolutely fine. 16 gigs of RAM is more than enough for this kind of thing. And I've been able to do quizzes, assessments, join lectures on Zoom, all without issue. Now, moving on to gaming, it is pretty much the same as on any other PC. You'll open Steam and that'll boot up. Let's expand it out. Here it is. Looks the same, functions the same. The only thing you lose are the performance profiles where you can set the power limit for each game in uh, gaming mode. But that's not really an issue when you're plugged in anyway. One minor thing though, if your power limit is set in gaming mode, that will carry over to desktop mode. So make sure before you switch to desktop mode that you're at the max performance profile. Most of your time spent in desktop mode in relation to games will be configuring non-Steam games. So if we pull up the Heroic Launcher, this is where you'll be able to add non-Steam games. So I can access my Epic Games, GOG Games, Prime Games. It's all here. It's all pretty cool. See, I've got Rocket League and Fall Guys installed and they've got updates as well. Pretty standard stuff. That is, unless you want to mod your games. Modding works for a select few games if you really want it to. Now, the only example I'm going to give, and the only example I can give because I never want to mod another game after doing it, is Lethal Company. Now, initially when I modded Lethal Company, I was able to drag and drop some files in. Uh, if I pull up the game directory, here it is, Browse Local Files. I was able to just drop in some files here, uh, Beppin, but unlike my friends on PC, I did find I had to do more moving stuff around. When they dropped it in, it automatically sorted itself out. I had to create some folders and move things around. Not a problem once I got it set up, fairly straightforward. Then we moved over to R2 Modman because they wanted to use more mods and we could just use profiles and that would be easier on Windows at least not on Linux. So I, I did eventually get it set up, but I had to go deep. YouTube tutorials, um, websites, GitHub, community forums, the whole shebang. I was able to get it set up. This was more than a single day, like not a whole day, but it took me multiple days to get it working reliably. And it only works in desktop mode. So what I will say is that unless you're a Linux veteran, 
I'd stay away from modding because even if there is a tutorial or a Linux version, it may not support your specific version of Linux. Next up is content consumption, and this is great. Everything works as you'd expect. You kind of just go to the website, log in, and everything just works. Um, just like on any other computer. You can also download movies from, let's say, unofficial sources. That works. uTorrent is even an app in the App Store. Sorry, not uTorrent, but there is a torrent one that works well enough. And while you're at it, VLC Media Player is also here. There it is. Now, while the Steam Deck screen is effectively 800p, 720p if you're watching 16 by 9 content, even less if you watch the ultra wide stuff, that's not a problem because you can hook it up to a monitor or a TV. It goes all the way to 4K if the USB hub you're using supports it. It has replaced my iPad for being the device I hook up to the living room TV for movie nights due to how external monitor friendly this is in desktop mode. Learn. Speaking of external monitor support, you can do a lot more than just output to a single screen like I'm doing here. You can also have the Steam Deck stay on and have a dual monitor setup. So you can put Spotify, Discord, or a performance tracker down there, whatever you want. And if you have two monitors, it supports that with the screen on. Take that M3 MacBook Air. What I'm saying is it's flexible. The external monitor support is just as robust as on Windows and Mac, if not better. Okay, here we go. Starting with the most minor complaints. Switching from game mode to desktop mode is pretty quick, but switching back to game mode takes a while. It full restarts for some reason. Also, I'll never fully understand how to uninstall and install programs. Like if we pull it up here, some of them are EXEs, some of them are images. Uh, they'll stay in downloads, they won't create uh, their own app folder in the home or the desktop. Sometimes an EXE will work, it's all over the place. And most programs don't just have a delete button. You're meant to just go into the file manager and delete it manually. Just get rid of all the files, purge them, find them yourself. Also, it doesn't like some accessories. I found when trying to move files around or delete a movie on this external drive, it doesn't like that. It'll say I don't have permission, even though I haven't set any restrictions and it works on other devices. So that's a bit odd, but whatever, minor thing. I can get around that. Now, what doesn't work? Modding, as I've said, Microsoft Office, a lot of professional creative programs are absent. Personally, I use LumaFusion for video editing and I will continue editing on my iPad. Just many programs you might want to use outside of the major stuff and you are always looking for an alternative or a way to force compatibility and it gets old after a while. Horizon Workrooms, a VR productivity app that lets you bring your monitor into VR. Doesn't work on Linux. You're going to use Immerse. There's just many examples like this, and if there isn't a workaround, you're basically f***ed. You may have noticed the older MacBook Air sitting here. Its purpose is monitor brightness control, because the program I used only functions on Mac and Windows, and it was coded, it seems, by some guy in his spare time. Oftentimes, you will find yourself lost on GitHub searching for how to get something to work, and you're almost always expected to edit or compile some code. I'm not at that level. Most people aren't and it's going to be a deal breaker for some. Personally, it's not, but that's because I usually work within the boundaries of Linux, and that's kind of the main takeaway here. Whether or not you can use the Steam Deck as your primary PC is less about the Steam Deck and if it can handle what you plan to throw at it, because it definitely can unless you're doing some intense video editing or coding a major project. It's more about whether you can handle working around Linux, Linux is great for general use, don't get me wrong. Word processing, video conferencing, you know, browsing, content consumption. It just depends on your line of work. I say check if the software you use is compatible. If it is, go for it. If it doesn't, or if the fear of something in the future not working is a serious concern, go for a Windows mini PC, or a handheld, or a Mac mini. There are plenty of other options. 
The only key advantage that the Steam Deck has over those other devices is game mode. The convenience of being able to pick it up and have it transform into a console by the time I'm on the couch or in bed is magical. And enough for me to keep it. Alright, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.